So that's really helpful. You know, um, I love that you're talking about curiosity because one of the things that I would say is a great takeaway for young professionals today, but I would say this of any generation, we all could stand to be a lot more curious. Um, I think, you know, when I hear feedback about people that are interviewing Gen Z coming into the workforce, I hear this a lot. They show up, they state their background, they will regurgitate their resume, and then they go silent. And that is absolutely landing in a pretty flat way. So instead, show up with great questions. Can you tell me a little bit about, to your point, you know, what it's like to be successful here? Can you tell me a little bit about what you're looking for in interns? Uh, you know, my background says this, is there anything about that that would really line up well with your business? So ask good questions. If, if Gen Z would be more curious, I think that's something that would really help them thrive. Um, yeah, so I, I'm glad you brought that up. And I, I think one of the things we're also really needing to stress today is the need for patience. This is not going to be fixed tomorrow. We yep. can't wave our magic wand. But there's a lot of impatience right now and a lot of frustration. And I think it's Gen Z and older generations looking at each other with impatience. Let's take a breath. Let's just chill for a minute. And let's just find a way in our own circle of influence yeah. to make a difference. Well, you know, everything's urgent all the time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so the first thing that goes out the window is things like asking questions. Yes. Let's just make assumptions and go, <clears throat> right? So the Gen Z steps in and assumes, well, this is just going to be like my teachers or professors, and they're going to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And then the manager says, why aren't you doing stuff? I hired you to do stuff. Go Which do stuff. Which plays into the narrative. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so yeah. they're not sitting down and asking questions. Well, what do you need from me? What can mm -hmm. I do to support you? Mm -hmm. What can I start doing, stop doing, or continue? you're doing yes to support you and that question sent up that way can go both ways mm -hmm. you know the young professional can ask that of her manager or his her his, his manager and that manager can ask that of her or his uh, direct reports what can I start stop or continue doing mm -hmm. one more important um, elephant in the room around this too is to acknowledge that to ask questions and be curious for you and I we take it for granted because we've worked on that muscle it is a very strong form of vulnerability absolutely a lot of people think if I ask that question, they're going to think I'm stupid. Right. Or I'm the manager. I, I should have all the answers. Right. You know, and so those kinds of beliefs hold us back from that opportunity to really learn and connect. And wouldn't you both, wouldn't you say that the most successful leaders you and I know are the most vulnerable? To, yes. Without a doubt. Yes. And we often refer to that as humble. Yes. They're humble. And, and what it looks like is they ask questions. Yes. They'll, they'll, they'll put something out to, to their team or to their group and say, okay, now what am I not seeing here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What should I be? What should we be thinking about that we're not? Yes. Those kinds of questions. It elicits, you know, a conversation from the room. And if they see someone hasn't spoken, they'll call them out. They'll say, Ah, Tina, no, she haven't said anything. I know you're thinking deeply about this. What's going on in, in, with you? Mm -hmm. What's going through your head? I'm curious. So asking those questions. So Randy, I know we've been going for a while. There's one more, uh, just tactical thing. I think it's important. Sure. When I think about Gen Z and other generations. Um, a tactical thing that is um, different, mm -hmm. we could argue um, potentially behind, depending upon how we want to view it, mm -hmm. is um, writing skills. Mm -hmm. So uh, more specifically, the ability to write clean and clear emails. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage all you know, young professionals that if you don't know if you're good at writing emails, Get a friend of yours, get someone else as a mentor to proofread some emails for a while. Yes. Because that generation is so quick on communication that they shorthand everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is some kind of instant message, direct message, text, and so everything's shorthanded. Mm -hmm. So punctuation is left out, lots of acronyms. Mm -hmm. um, that's perfectly fine in that kind of informal communication. Yes. But our world right now, at least for the last 30 years, mm -hmm. has really been driven by email. Yes. And so you need to learn how to, to write a really clear and coherent email. And that's not going to stop. By the way. And, and probably not for a while until yeah. we have something else that takes mm -hmm. that over. But mm -hmm. that did come in about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now it's that's that's the way that business is conducted today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the, the, the modern version of a memo. <laughs>